They say that men fall in love with their eyes and women fall in love with their ears. And there's truth to that. That um, there's a reason women love poetry and there's a reason women love deep and intimate conversations and why they like to get on the phone with their friends and talk to them for a long time. Um, whereas husbands are just fine, you know, hearing the, the basic details of what's going on. Um, the basic points and not going into too, too many details. So that's something for men to keep in mind, that women need intimate conversation and they need um, undivided attention when you are talking to them. All men want respect. Ladies, men need admiration. They need to feel appreciated. And they need to feel that their women are proud of them. The wife may be the one to instigate most of the major changes in life. She might be the one who brings home the thicker paycheck. In some cases, she may even be older. However, the husband should be given the respect of having the clear role of being the emir or the leader of the family. He should be honored by the wife and the children as the guardian of the household. And he, in turn, should recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the guardian of his and his wife's household. Now, of course, acknowledging that your husband is the emir doesn't mean that you aren't vocal in sharing your opinions. One grandmother joked, the husband is the head of the family, but the wife is the neck that turns the head. You don't want to contradict or correct your husband in public. And same, same with husbands. You want to give each other the dignity that your partner deserves. You don't want to ever demean your spouse to your children. If you don't honor your children's parent, your children will not honor their parent either. And remember, it's still riba or backbiting to talk about your spouse in a way that he or she wouldn't like, even if you're only discussing your partner with people who will always love him or her. You don't want to let down your guard when it comes to your partner's rights. Ladies, if your husband ever buys you a gift that you don't love, love it anyway. Try to see the heart of the gift giver behind the gift. There are always gentle and cheerful ways of honestly communicating your preferences at a later time. And this is an important one for young people these days. Regardless of whether you had a social media presence before your marriage or not, once you're married, be aware of your partner's views on how much you post about your yourself and your life with your partner. You want to respect each other's limits. Put your cell phone, your book, and yes, even your prayer beads away when your partner is trying to talk to you about their day. Give your undivided attention and teach your children who are old enough to understand that they are not to interrupt their parents' time together. Laugh with your partner, but never at your partner. Never laugh at your partner's expense. Make your home a haven, and ladies, make yourself his hoodie. And men, make yourself her hero. Now, I realize that there are many women today who are uncomfortable with the word hoodie. But hoodies are real creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are described in the Holy Quran as the companions in paradise. And I believe that it's time that we reclaim this word and own it for what it is. There's no reason why our homes cannot be little pieces of paradise, inshallah. And there's no reason why we cannot be heavenly companions for our husbands within our own homes. So when you see your beloved for the first time after he returns home or after she returns home, make sure to greet your partner and kiss him or her or hug him or her. Practicing Muslim men and women who have taqwa, God consciousness, will avoid all physical contact contact with men and women who are not their blood relatives. And many of them are surrounded at work by other men and women who make a real effort to look attractive and to smell good. You are the reward your husband gets at the end of a long, dry day.